Good morning, fellas. It's Henry. At Mowers and Blows. Oh, you. Oh, you. So after a couple of days, I asked you guys, my, sub my wonderful subscribers, whether or not I should keep or lose this ghetto cup holder. So the votes were pretty close, actually, surprisingly. Um, yesterday, it was like 14 to 12 or something like that to keep it. But then overnight, I said in my last video, I was going to keep it open for another while. I'm just, you know, curious. So it ended up, right? 18 to 16, lose. So it's interesting because two of the loses didn't actually say lose. They just said, hey, what do you need two freaking cup holders for, right? Don't make no sense, which it doesn't. You know, so uh, I'm gonna lose it. Uh, I don't plan on keeping this thing. You know, for, you know. I hope to get rid of it. Pretty much any amount of money. Just want to get rid of it. Uh, I figure anything over two hundred dollars. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, this thing costs what, like ninety nine cents at one of those rest stop convenience stores, whatever. You know what? I gotta clean that. It bothers me. But Henry, now you have two holes in the hood. I'm like, yeah, so what? It's not like this is a Rolls Royce or something like that, you know what I mean? It's a beat up old riding mower, cosmetically masked to look like a newer mower than it is, right? I always mess this up, all right. Like I said, this quick color for 99, 98 cents, right? You don't even really have to mask because it never drips. There's not enough, there's not enough paint in here for you to, for it to drip. It's mostly all air. That's it, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. So, uh, a couple of you guys said, man, Henry, you, you go through a lot of work when you tear down tractors. And it's true. I spent like all day taking apart that uh, second Cub Cadet. And I spent all day taking apart that second Yard Machines, you know. But I'll tell you what, in my experience, right, when you take everything apart, some nut somewhere out there is going to need that part that you just threw away. So I take all the parts that I can take off pretty easily. Like I'll give you a for instance. I came back here to do this and to get something out of my shed, which I have boxes and boxes of different parts. Briggs here, yard machines there, a cup cadet there, a keys uh, walk behind there, Toro there. You know, I've got boxes inside the shed full of parts that I've stripped out of engines and you know, mowers and snow blowers, whatever. I have, I have parts from a lot of things, and they're all listed on my eBay. Um, you guys can check out my eBay account, Mowers Blowers. Anyway, uh, so I just sold this last night. This is off my Cub Cadet. It's a shock absorber thing. I'm not really sure what it is, but. 13 bucks. I'll spend like four bucks shipping it. Ebay, eBay and PayPal fees will take it down to maybe nine or eight. Eight dollar profit. Eight dollars is eight dollars. You do this like 20 times, it's 160 dollars. You know what I mean? So that's why I scavenge the parts off of the thing and don't just chuck up the whole thing. You know? I hope this works. It seems to. Hydraulics. I don't really know what this is actually. But whatever. Eight bucks is eight bucks. Anyway, so you know what's interesting today? Is today is the day that I'm going to go and bring my black beauty to my mother's house, right? 
And then when I bring the Black Beauty to my mother's house, I'm gonna give what I'm using at my mother's house, the Craftsman mid-engine 13.5 Briggs engine riding mower with the bagger on it. The reason why I, I have that at my mother's is because my mother's house is in Queens, New York City. The houses are very close together and the pathway that goes from the front of the house to the backyard is very narrow, right? And years ago when I brought it over there, there was a lot of brush. So I could only fit like a 30 inch riding mower through there. Like a 40 inch, like this Murray or a 42, it wouldn't fit back there. But over the past couple of years, I've slowly cleared that brush. So it's now more of a wider pathway to go to the back. So I'm thinking it'll be tight. But I think I can get my Black Beauty through the back. My mom has this big inclined hill in the front of her house with the Craftsman 30 inch. I do it that way and I'm like sideways. And sometimes I worry about tipping over because it's not strong enough to go up the other direction. <clears throat> so I think I need a, uh, a lawn tractor to do that. It would make things a lot easier because it's wider, less passes. This has a good bagger, you know what I mean? That 30 inch thing bagger, it, uh, you know, you, it's, a, it's a dump from the seat. You, you do that and it dumps it on the floor. But you'd have to put some kind of bag or tarp on the ground and dump it onto the tarp, then lift it up and then put it into the garbage can. Just stupid design, if you ask me. Not that anybody's asking me, you know. So there it is. There's my Black Beauty. And I'm going to bring this to my mother's house. I'm not selling it. I'm just giving it to my mother to use. Well, I use it. <laughs> I use it at my mother's house. She doesn't mow the lawn. She's uh, 76. Anyway, this has been my uh, go-to daily driver for the past 18 years. Always starts. Always runs well. Mows. Bags drives, everything. Everything you need is right there. I even have that makeshift uh, rear cargo carrier that doesn't really carry anything. It just looks cool. Uh, that's from a uh, Nissan Frontier uh, bed extender cage that I fabricated. Got a fuel shut off switch and I love the uh, wheels. The white walls with the ATV tires in the back. Got a fuel shut off there. This has your flat head, 12.5 Briggs engine, has run has run great for the past, like I said, 18, 19 years, you know. Never a problem, except uh, maybe 10 years ago I did run into a tree and I bent the front axle. I spent about $150 on eBay to get a new axle. Uh, I also bought the bagger system brand new, it, like, it cost like 300 bucks. I actually had this wrapped uh, liquid ice energy drink until I stripped it uh, a few years ago and it's just black underneath it was fine so that's the original paint I have LED bulbs in there it's a good tractor um, I think it'll be great sitting at my mom's house it'd be much easier to mow her lawn and then I'm gonna take that 30 inch um, I'm gonna take that 30 inch craftsman at my mom's house and bring it to my cousin Eric who lives in Glen Head remember he just moved I have a lot of crickets here. Anyway, that'll be a good start. It'll be his first riding mower ever. Uh, I was initially thinking about giving him the green John Deere, but um, honestly, that's a little bit more too much tractor for him right now. Maybe when he starts getting used to riding mowers and tractors, um, I'll upgrade him later on. But for now, I think uh, him using the riding mower, it's really easy to drive. It's that hydrostatic, one handle, push forward, it goes forward, push backwards, it goes backwards. Very easy to use, so I think that's what he needs. I'll let him use that for a while, see if he likes it. I mean, it's got the bagger too, so that's all you really need. So I'm going to bring this to the front, I'm going to load it in my van, and I'm actually uh, taking Boba with me and my son to go see my mom. 
mow her lawn with that and then bring her old mower to my cousin's house. So I'll videotape that adventure. Um, I won't be wrenching on anything today even though I have two LT1000s that I have to, to fix in the garage and I still don't know what I'm going to do about this deck because um, I don't think the deck on the third one in the garage is going to fit on here. This one also doesn't have any of the hangers underneath. It, it's all been taken away. So I think this is, uh, whoever had this, want to just use this as a utility tractor, you know. Maybe put a plow on the front or just like haul things with a, with a, a trailer, you know. So I don't want to put all that crap back on there because it's difficult to get to, you know. It's difficult to put the hang... It's tough enough to get the hangers off. But to put them back on again behind that dash area, I mean, it's just like... You need octopus fingers to get your... You know, it's, it's going to be a lot. So, you know, I don't know if I'm going to do that. Um... I forget what this is. I think that's an I think that's a Murray deck that he gave me. Here's another deck in uh, it's not that great of a shape because it's missing that thing. A, I think these are all craftsman decks. You know what? That's pretty good. This is a craftsman deck for the LT1000. And look, it's in good shape. It's missing a uh, pulley. I wonder if the spindles work. Actually, that has an extra pulley. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to figure all this stuff out another day. But uh, I need to get uh, LT1000 number 2 running. That's the Pete Lombardi LT1000. It has a uh, Kohler Command 16 in it. It's uh, top end is in pieces. So I have to figure out what he took off, why he took it off, and whether or not it runs or not. Then we'll go from there. But today's adventure will be uh, basically giving my cousin my mom's mower and giving my mom the Black Beauty. That's an adventure all by itself. I'm going to show you guys what Queens looks like. But uh, thank you. Thank you guys for voting. It was fun you know, to have interactive voting like that. While I didn't get 250 votes like I wanted, it was good enough. Good enough. 18 plus uh, 16, that's uh, 34. 34. 34 votes. That's not bad. So this I've listed for uh, four, 450. I'll let it go for 200. I mean, look, I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't pay anything for it, right? Got the engine running. I didn't spend any money on there except for maybe a couple of cents worth of paint. I literally didn't spend any money on this, so it's been completely free. That's right, free. Um, runs, drives, mows. Seriously, it's got a Tecumseh uh, 13.5. Eh, I don't really like it, um, but yeah, if I could get 200 bucks, 250 out of it, I'd be more than happy. Just get rid of it, and then uh, I'm going to be clearing out my hoard. You know, I'm. Getting rid of that, the Black Beauty out of here. And I sold that red thing, the red yard machines yesterday for uh, 500. Can you believe that? And then you're gonna be like, oh, well Henry, if you're if you're taking the uh, Black Beauty to your mom's, how are you gonna suck up leaves in the fall? And I'm saying, oh, well, not only do I have a vac chipper, but now I'm thinking I'm gonna keep the uh, Sabre by John Deere. It has a good bagger, uh, engine runs, the whole thing runs great, you know? I almost didn't want to sell it. So I'm going to use this now to suck up leaves in my uh, house. For the corner areas, I've got the vac chipper that I've decided not to sell. And so that'll take care of the leaves for fall. And um, for cutting, without bagging, I've got my zero turn. And trust me, I'm always going to have a machine to, to cut with, you know what I mean? Always. So I'm not worried about it. But paying it forward, giving my cousin a free riding mower. That's right, free. Like I said, this thing always starts. It's been sitting here for like uh, two months. Still shut off on. Get gas. Not gas. Check Earl. Plenty of Earl.
like I said, always starts. Choke, break, turn. about that I was gonna drive it all the way in but I've had a mishap before when I tried that I'm not gonna do it again now attach the winching system onto here and give it an extra pull and get the bagger system and get ready to bring that along too okay now I'm gonna load it You know, that winch is nice for $55, but the 
remote control with no manual switch. The remote control is like kind of on its way out already, you know? If it does go out, what am I going to do? Go out and buy another one, you know? Wish there was a way I could, you know, attach some kind of a manual, manual switch to it, you know? Here's the bagger system that I bought for 300, 300 some dollars. Bought it back in uh, 2003 or something. Spent the uh, full price. I never spent full price. But I had to have it. The amount of leaves on the East Coast is ridiculous. Not gonna rake leaves. Anyway, off to Queen. Okay, so I'm uh, I'm in Queens now with my son and Boba, and this is what Queens looks like. This is actually a really nice part of Queens. It's called Douglaston. It borders uh, Little Neck, which is a very nice area as well. It's the Little Neck is the last city or town that um, borders Long Island. So my mom lives on this huge hill. It's at the top of a hill. So we never have any drainage problems whenever there's like a flood or something like that. We never get it because water just goes right down the hill. You know what I mean? Um, this was just a Cape Cod type home, but it's been renovated the past five years or so. It actually stretches off to the backyard quite a bit. It's uh, pretty big. It's almost six bedrooms. So this is the hill that I was talking about. When I, when I mow with my uh, riding mower, this part right there, you know how the incline? So if I go up and down horizontally, it wants to run straight into the bushes, so it's kind of dangerous. When I mow this way, forward and back, forward and back, right when I get to that area there, I, if, I feel like it's gonna tip over. So I have to sit on the extreme right side of the chair at the chair, the seat, to prevent myself from flip, tipping over, you know? So it's a pain in the butt. And uh, so I think my uh, riding mower is going to be much better. So believe it or not, um, this home <laughs> is worth about 1.2 million, only because of the location. It's super expensive. Crazy, right? There's Bulba. So here I'm at the garage. This is the riding mower I'm giving my cousin. Uh, it's been very reliable. 13.5 overhead valve. Has a 13.5 industrial commercial overhead valve engine. Um, believe it or not, that battery has been here for five years and it still cranks well. But uh, it's probably going to need a change in the next year or so. Maybe. But so far so good, you know? So this part of the video is for my cousin, okay? If you guys don't want to watch this part, it's going to be like five minutes. Lift this up. Easy for you to say. And hold it up so it slides back down again. Okay? That's to put it down. This is the um, pretty much the, the gas. You know, there's no foot pedals except for the brake and clutch on that side over there. That's called a brake clutch pedal. So this, it's just so easy to use. Push it forward to go forward, neutral in the middle, pull it back to go back. It's so easy to use, which is why I'm giving you this one, because for you to get acclimated to a riding mower, you don't want to think about things too much. When the engine's running, you want to mow, engage the blades here. Now the blades are going to be on. This thing mows backwards also, so be careful. 
only two handles here. Forward and reverse, blade engagement. This thing on the left here, this is the height adjustment. Level 6 is the highest, level 1 is the lowest. You always want to do it around 4. If it's 3, it's going to be a very close cut. You may scalp your lawn. So don't ever put it to 3 or 2. If 3 works for you, then put it to 3, but start off by trying 4 first. Actually, you start off by using 5 first, you know. Um, here's the throttle. Now, this is this you have to think about this for a bit. Um, so look, when you're doing a cold start, push it all the way to choke, right? Although I don't really feel like it matters that much. To start it for the first time. And then move it back just slightly, like a half inch to an inch, right? And just leave it there. Don't ever go down here, okay? You're not going to need it, trust me. So leave it right there. Choke uh, all the way up to start it. Once it starts, pull it back half an inch to an inch. All right, as long as you feel the throttle is nice and high. Remember, height adjustment, choke, throttle. Don't really go below that because you won't need it. Here's the gas over here. Pretty big gas tank. It's full. And over here is the bagger system. Now, if I didn't have a bagger system, you wouldn't have this big black plate there, okay? The big black plate accommodates that bagger. This bagger hooks on, and I'm going to show you in a minute. But first, I'm going to show you how this works. It has a few cell... You know what? I'm not even going to tell you that because it's confusing. Um, power and one crank all the way. This is the parking brake. I'm going to take this off now. So I'm going to start this up right now for you and uh, show you exactly how to start it up. So you just get on, eh? <laughs> right? You always step on this brake clutch pedal all the way just to start it, right? Remember, first start, you always put the choke all the way to the front, right? Here we go. That's it. Foot on the brake. Turn it. Uh-oh. it started. Take it back a half inch. Can't tell any difference, right? <laughs> Let go of the brake. Right? That's it. That's all you think about. And now all you gotta do is turn this. I'm not turning. See? We're gonna go reverse. Ready? Watch. Go faster. some kind of emergency you don't remember what to do, right? Step on a brake. It'll disconnect this. So you can do this and that, nothing will happen, see? You let go of that. Now look, if you have this in reverse, and you let go of it, it'll go backwards. Put this in forward, let go of the brake, it'll go forward. As long as you press that, you're safe. Put this back in neutral. And now watch this. It's in neutral, right? I want to mow now. So I'm going to put, I'm going to engage the uh, PTO. So that's the blades, see? Engage, disengage. This is the blade control. Slowly. The blades are moving. If you get off, it'll stall. Or in my case, it won't stall because I put the switch out. <laughs> Disengage. There you go. It's that easy to use. Now 
Now you can't push or pull it when it's running. I mean, uh, when it's not running. I'll show you. Just shut it off. You saw that there was like a second or two delay when I turned the switch off. That's because the fuel solenoid has a valve that once you turn the power off, the valve goes up. When it goes up, it stops fuel from going into the carburetor. So you had like maybe a teaspoon of gas that was still going up, right? And, and that's why it shut off. So that's how that works. Um, what else here? Oh, so look. That's in neutral, right? Out of gear. It's a hydrostatic transmission. So you can't push or pull it without the engine being on unless you disengage the transmission. So here, this lever here, it's in, okay? If you wanna move and push this around to freewheel, you disengage the transmission by pulling this and hooking it there, okay? Now, you can push and pull it freewheel to move it around the garage or something like that, you know? And then, now remember, if you get back on here without doing that, uh, it's not gonna go anywhere because the transmission's disengaged. So to engage it again, pull it, turn it, and go that way. So now you can't turn it, you can't move it anymore. See, it's in gear. So now I'm going to show you how to put the bagger system on for when fall comes and there's leaves everywhere. Alright, so it's fall. There's leaves everywhere. You don't want to rake. Well, who really wants to rake, right? It's really pretty easy to install. So you get this bagger out, right? And then you get the tube. There's two pieces to the tube, right? So uh, I'm going to show you what to do with this first. So right now what it has on here is called a mulch cover. Basically there's a wing nut right here. Just loosen the wing nut. And this thing simply moves up like that. You take this chute cover, right? And you just match it up. Right there, see? Like that. You put the wing nut back on here. This just sits right there on top. See the opening here? Now you take this long tube, right? And you can see that the tube is tapered. Over here it's like flat. And over on this end, it's kind of bent in a little, right? The bent in one is always on the top. So you stick in the flat part with the hole facing that way, right? Stick it in like that. And you match it up. Match it up to the chute. Right here. Okay. Give it a little push. It had like an original thing, I don't know what I did with it, so I have this thing. See the two holes? I put one in here and then just to hold it in place. Or zip tie it, whatever you want. And I'll put this on, it's pretty easy.
been a while since I used this. So. The bagger, I mean. That's it. It just it hooks on here. See this bracket? This bracket here and this bracket here. It just hooks right here. Like that. Right? Now there's this cover. So there's this cover. It's sort of broken, but it'll work. Just put this on. There's this like um, spring. It's supposed to be like that. You could just do that if you want, right? But um, with the air exiting that area, going over bumps, whatever, it may slide off like that, you know? So I like secure this bolt to this bracket here, to this round thing. So I just stick this in. Like that, so now it's spring loaded, you know. Like that, see, so it kind of keeps it down, you know what I mean. Anyway, so look, the bad part of this design, right, is that it sucks up leaves and stuff pretty well, but it's dumping it that I find a problem with. So when you dump it, right, let's say you, you're mowing and you got all the leaves inside that bagger, right, and you could see. It's not really sealed perfectly. It's stuff may come out. But when you have a lot of leaves, right, it just, it stops it, you know? When you have a lot of leaves on the bottom here, it'll catch. But in the beginning, some may come out, you know, like the loose ones. Or you could try to bend this back a little bit more. I try. So I don't, that's what I don't really like about the bagger. But trust me, it's going to work because I've sucked up leaves every year. So look, when it's full of leaves, right? How to dump it, you gotta turn this like this, and it all goes on the floor. So you gotta put like a tarp on the ground or a big bag or something, or just you have a pile. It's better to put a tarp or something down so that all the leaves are on the tarp, and all you gotta do is lift the tarp and dump it into the garbage can, right? But that's it, that's how you, you unload this. So that's what they mean by uh dump from seat, you know, how they have dump from seat stuff? This is a dump from seat version. Where you dump it on the floor. It's not a bag where you um, take and put it in the garbage can, you know, which would be, I guess, I guess this is easier, but I mean, you still got to pick it up from the ground into a garbage can, you know. But anyway, that's the bagger system. That's how that works. I only use the bagger system when there's leaves everywhere and I don't want to rake, right? So it does pick up leaves and stuff like that well, right? But uh, if there's no leaves on the ground, I just mulch. So that's it, really. Um, I'm gonna take all this stuff off real quick. The bolt. back on now you can mulch see so that was pretty easy I just wanted to show you how to put the bag on because I know you're gonna call me and go hey Henry how do you put that on hey Henry it won't start how do you get it into gear hey Henry all right that's it give it back to me just get a landscaper that's it so uh I'm gonna move this over there and get my black beauty out. Okay, I'm gonna go through this again. You just get on, leave the choke where it was because we just ran it. Break. Right. 
Well, maybe you do have to choke me. Back that throttle, now it's stuck. So wouldn't you know it, the one time that I'm about to give this to somebody, the choke throttle wire snapped. So now the choke is loose from the uh, throttle thing. It's always been kind of hinky, so... You know what? I'm not going to deliver this today to my cousins because I need to fix that. So I'm going to take this home and I'm going to fix it and then I'm going to bring it to you. But anyway, that is how it runs though. I just have to fix that throttle cable, that's all. I always meant to fix it. It's always been kind of hinky. I have a few extra throttles at home so I'll work on that next. Now I'm just unloading a beauty. Yeah. So here is the walkway to my mom's house's backyard. You see how narrow it is? I'm going to see if it fits. So as you saw, I was successful and uh, the machine did fit barely through the sides. Uh, I'm done with my mom's lawn. Unfortunately, I can't bring that machine to uh, my cousin Eric's house because the throttle cable broke. And also there's something hinky about the um, solenoid. I've had uh, four of those things and on three of them, I've had to hardwire the magneto straight to the ignition switch because it always has problems. Looks like this one has that same problem. So I'm going to have to attach a uh, magneto wire directly to the ignition switch because it's not starting and I have to fix that uh, throttle cable. Three years I haven't had problems with it. The minute I want to bring it out to my cousin, the throttle cable breaks. 
and the magneto kill wire doesn't work. Can you believe that? Isn't that how things go though? Um, so I have to get used to riding this thing um, on this lawn because uh, setting three at my house is scalping the hell out of uh, this lawn. So it's different grass, different heights. It's not flat ground like uh, my house. So I have to adjust. So I was I was cutting it at level at uh, cutting level five, which is really high for me. But her lawn's more plush, you know, and soggy. Anyway, so that's it for today. I guess I'm just gonna take uh, that thing home and fix it. Hey guys, support my channel. Buy a sticker. Also follow me on Instagram at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website MowersBlowers.com. See you guys on my next part. Have a great day. Hey guys, Boba and I want to thank you for all the support of Mowers and Blowers. If you'd like, make a short video clip like these, and I'll put it as an outro in my future videos. Henry, I gotta go. I'll see you next time on Mowers and Blowers. <laughs>